Fabrizia Pons from Italy co-driving. Interesting to see how she gets on on our unseen road. Well, in just a few minutes' time, I shall be taking part in the RAC Rally, one of the world's most grueling motorsport events. I'll be sharing a car with the driver who's already won the event twice, Roger Clark. But until a couple of months ago, I'd never even seen a rally car. With just two months to go, can suburban motoring man become international rally man? Yes, I must be mad. Just to sit in one of those cars looks like heroism verging on the insane. Tony Pond, winner of the Manx Rally, offers a reassuring word of advice for a beginner. Well, the trick is to sort of go and see a tailor and buy many underpants <laughs> as possible. Uh, the first time in a rally car is sort of yeah, quite exciting. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like it or not, the man I'm going to have to impress with my coolness and whose reputation is in my hands is the idol of British rallying, Roger Clark. Uh, I'm anxious that I'm not going to be able to get good enough at it to be any use of it at all. Do you think there's any chance? Well, I think you've taken on a, a mammoth town. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not going to be easy for you. But I think with a bit of hard work, or a lot of hard work before, between now and the event, um, we'll get through. Welcome, everybody here. I tried to explain you of the theory, which is very dry, what happens when you drive the car. Driving your car is more emotional than... Rauno Altonen has won just about every major rally prize going. The normal way around the bend is just to, to drive nicely. This is, of course, our side of the road, which we can use. And without the driver realising it, the car, while he turns into the corner, automatically goes slightly sideways, very slightly. And you know, you always have big trees on the outside. Always. <laughs> always, yes. Going towards the trees. You know you have the right slip angle, but it still tends to go to the trees. What do you do? Um, close your eyes and uh, pray. You a throttle with a sort of pumping moment. And now declutch if it goes too far. Show me that again. Declutch it. Declutch if it goes too far. Good grief. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> That's incredible. The car didn't seem to be in contact with the ground at any stage. That's really well, it, amazing. Did you feel the G-forces? Yes, very much. I feel slightly giddy as well, going around in circles. Do you still think you could do it? I don't think I could do it like that, but I'll have a good... I'll have a try, anyway. To sit in the driving seat of a 250-horsepower rally car for the very first time, with cameras clamped everywhere, is an experience to cherish. Don't milk the wheel. Keep big movements. Faster. More power. More power, faster. Don't be afraid. Just put down your right foot. More, even more. Now it's starting it. Don't be afraid. Just accelerate more. Even more. That's fine. Declutch. Now you, you tend to have a continuous, constant power setting. Yeah. Keep moving your throttle. More power, more. That's fine, yes, excellent. Go on. More. It's called 
the spin. <laughs> <laughs> you can start I thought it. that might happen. Yes. <laughs> right. Now, where did I go wrong? It looks that happens like every time. I got the shakes. Well, then. you can switch off now. I think okay. you're getting out of breath, aren't you? A little bit, yes. Yeah, I can see that, yes. Now, you see, this is, this is quite normal. This is only lesson one. Yes. <laughs> On yes, I've never been in a rally car in a row. I'll say. Five, two. That's amazing. Step I see, right. Oh, no. uh, can we do it one step at a time, please? <laughs> one step at a time in this game means spinning the car, but at 60 miles an hour. Knee clutch. Hand on lever. Right, left, more. Hop, hop. Not bad. How did I do? Well, I had to tell you more. Yes, you had to tell yes, me a lot. Yes, and now you see we are facing the correct way, which is not bad. I was right. worried that you would not find a uh, handbrake lever in time, but you just got your hand nicely on it. Right, good. You see, some people grab the gear lever. Yeah, like I did. Yes, first, first time, time, yes. Right, right. Meanwhile, I have to learn the other side of rallying, co-driving. Right on what it is. So Without accurate so navigation and timing, you simply get excluded. And as international co-driver Ellen Morgan knows, that can happen all too easily. And then you've got your service schedule that you're going to give to the service crew. Hmm. Okay, so service number, there is only one on this event, so number one. Number one, all right. Co-drivers are frequently called office managers, and their drivers expect to be told exactly what to do all the time. And this is a road book, actually, from last year's RAC rally, which will help you to get from stage to stage. This is from competitive section to competitive section. Uh, these are tulip diagrams. Suddenly, it's time to put theory into practice, a moment of some pride. To get a license for the big rally, you have to complete three little ones, and this is the first. And that's your fail time. So if you arrive after 11.35, you're out. Yeah. In, the same, in the same way on your last... It sounds complicated, and it's meant to be. The co-driver is tested just as much as the driver. Yes. And if you're after that time, yes. then you'd be out of the rally. With the traditional good luck token for beginners hurriedly stowed, the clocks are running and the start upon us. Forest rallying is simple. The times of each car over a series of private tracks called stages are added up and the fastest car wins, provided the co-driver can keep the car to the complicated route between the stages and a timetable precise to the second. I'm absolutely furious. I forgot to start the stopwatch. I think it, <laughs> it's bound to be something. It's terrific, isn't it? Isn't this fun? It's like, uh, it's like driving down a... I wish they'd make these roads a bit wider. <laughs> yes, it is fun, and we finished. But a cheerful four-hour jaunt like that one is to the RAC rally, what window cleaning is to climbing the north face of the Eiger. I've still got a lot to learn before I can hold my head up in the presence of international competitors. And that thought is made extra clear by one of the most respected men in rallying, now elevated to a seat on the board at Ford's, but who has, in his time, won the RAC rally as a co-driver and then managed the most successful British rallying teams, first at BMC and later at Ford's. Stuart Turner is known as the godfather of rallying, and he knows the possible pitfalls of working with Roger Clark as well as anyone. Stuart, I'm taking part in the RAC rally co-driving and driving with Roger Clark. What do you think I should be doing between now and the rally? I think you've got to get to know Roger, and if there's any secret to the rally, it's understanding him, because with greatest respect to you and your part, whether you win the rally or not, depends on Roger's driving over the stages. So you've got to try and find 
what turns him on, what, make, what motivates Roger, what makes him want to go. You are privileged to be going with one of Britain's rally folk heroes, so if you let him down, I would go from to finish under an assumed name because you quite easily get lynched by some of the enthusiasts. So, it's Roger Clark I've got to contend with as much as the event itself. Stuart Turner's advice to get to know Roger means a visit to his home. But how approachable is this motoring superstar going to be? Will he make allowances for the inevitable mistakes of a newcomer to the sport? Two things I know already. He worries about giving bad interviews and regards journalists who don't take him seriously as parasites who should be ignored. So, in that slightly chilling light, what advice has Roger Clark got for his new co-driver, on one of the world's most difficult rallies. Um, well, you've seen the route cards and the route uh, and the paperwork that the organisers dish out. Uh, study that very carefully so that you know what every page says. Um, obviously, have a very careful look of the, the route so that you have in your own mind which part of the route is in daylight, which is in dark time, where you're going to need to have fuel and tyres and this sort of thing spaced around the route. Now, um, obviously, it's quite a close relationship sitting in a car for four days at a stretch. Have you got any uh, personal quirks or foibles, or are there any that I should avoid? <laughs> <laughs> I to keep those as a surprise for you. <laughs> I don't like smoking in the car. Right. Uh, otherwise, I'm very free and easy, I think. You don't mind a lot of idle chit-chat or long, gloomy silences? I don't mind either. You don't? I'm sure during the rally, depending on how well the event goes for us, uh, we shall have a bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> So my training program continues with another group of highly specialised drivers. The difference with the police is that they have to play dodgems with other traffic. Inspector John Hook explains. Always assume that every other road user that we come into contact with is a raving lunatic who's absolutely drunk and who's looking to commit suicide. What can I, as a rally driver, get out of this session? Well, look, Chris, let's not talk about it. Let's get in the car and go and do it. The commentary on Inspector Hook's simulated pursuit of a gang of criminals is the result of years of training and official procedure. At speeds up to 100 miles an hour on suburban roads, I'm thankful for that. OK, Chris, look, we've just got ourselves an emergency call to a bank raid in South Mims. There are five men in a red Ford Granada, and I'm on my way. The blue light on. Up, it's a 30 mile an hour speed limit, mirror. Just breaking the speed down, breaking the speed down. And there he is. What's he going to do? Is he going to turn around on me? I'll break the speed down and hold back here. There he goes. Yeah, there's five of them up. I'll just get up, make contact with him, watching the junctions right and left, it's clear. The road goes round to the left, watching the pedestrians on the right hand side of the road and the garage forecourt to look for movement. There's a junction off to the right hand side. He could go down that, check in the mirror. If he does, I don't have to signal. He looks like he's going. There's one coming, it's going to balk him. All right, where's he going to go? Yeah, he's going straight across. I'm going to go across with him. Looking to the left, over the top of the bushes. It's clear. Checking the mirror, and round I go. There's a stall sign. Looking to the right, there's one coming, and he's doing a double back on me, watching that dog. The junction on the right, he could turn into that. There's a slow-moving van in front of him, and a Capri in front of that. He's going to be hard-pressed to get past these. He's got a junction off on the left-hand side he could go into. Checking the mirror, nothing too close behind. He could have gone in there, he didn't. He could go in here, mirror. He's braking firmly, braking firmly. No need to signal. Yeah. This is a no through road. He's not going to get anywhere here. He's got no option. I've got him. There's nowhere at the end of this road that he can go. He's mine. Wherever he wants to go, he's mine. He's mine. What happens most often? Usually they crash. Mm. Usually they crash. The sensible ones give in. <laughs> 